Hi, in my today's video cast, I will talk about uh, interceptors in CDI. How do we use the interceptors in CDI? I will talk about the concept of feed interceptors. Uh, interceptors are not new to Java 6. The interceptors are already available in uh, to the EJBs. Uh, if you see the EJB 3 compliant in any uh, server, then uh, the interceptors are going to be used. The concept of interceptors are uh, interceptors are capable of intercepting uh, intercepting uh, the processing of an any EJB session bin or uh, MDBs also. So what, what does it mean? If I have a method in my session bin and I want to intercept uh, the execution of that particular method, that means I want to do some other operations before or after the invocation of that method. Uh, in that case, we can use interceptors. So defining interceptor in pretty, is pretty easy. Uh, so same thing has been derived. Uh, okay, uh, it was available in EJ, EJB3. Now the same thing, the, the same concept and same functionality can, can be achieved in CDI based applications also. So CDI also has support to interceptors. Uh, but it has to be done through a interceptor binding. So I'll talk about that interceptor interceptor binding later on in my CDI applications. Um, so to do that, there are few things in, in, in the interceptor class. So when you write an interceptor class, you must have to enter the class with an annotation called interceptor. So for me, I have written a logging interceptor. And uh, so since it's an interceptor, I have to annotate the class with interceptor. Now the most important thing is you write any method, you give any name, the return type must ha, has to be object and uh, uh, write any method. In my case, I have written log method entry and you have to pass the invoke, invocation context object. So what it does, I'll take, talk later on. Uh, you write a method, the return type should be object and you have to pass the parameter called invocation context. Now the most important thing annotate the method with around invoke okay so this is a particular very very important and uh, so when you do that your uh, container will uh, treat this method as the intercepted method that means uh, when i apply this interceptor to any ejb or any uh, cdi based services so before execution of particular method in my service class of cdi this method will be invoked so this method is useful for intercepting uh, my uh, targeted uh, uh, CDI services method or something. So this you have to take care. You have to annotate the uh, method with around invoke. So this is the concept of login, uh, the main requirement of logging interceptor. Now to use this in CDI based applications, one more thing we have to do. You have to declare this login, logging interceptor, whatever interceptor class you have, you have written. You use, you have to declare them in my beans.xml because this is a CDI based application. Your CDI container has to know uh, you have created an interceptor. Interceptor for this, there is an um, in, in your beans.xml there is an attribute called interceptor. Inside that you have a class element. Uh, inside the class element you have to give the fully qualified class name of your logging interceptor. So my login interceptor resides since it's in this package org.mock.sample.interceptors with the class name. It's a fully qualified class name of my logging interceptor. Uh, now there is, there is something ca called interceptor binding also in, in uh, CDI. So what it does, it creates a binding of my existing interceptor with a custom annotation. So uh, the usage is pretty simple. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about the usage later on. So to do that, I have created a custom annotation called uh, log and uh, I have few annotations required inherited and interceptor binding. This is the main uh, thing uh, and uh, my uh, target is method and type and my class level I can apply and my method level I can apply and the recognition is runtime. So these annotations will be used in the runtime. Just Remember, the, the most important part is this interceptor binding. So it will create and binding this this uh, with the custom annotation with the existing interceptor. To do the binding, we'll go back to our login interceptor, and uh, there is some we have annotated 
the logging interceptor uh, with the custom understand whatever we created. So what it does, it create a binding be between this custom annotation log and this logging interceptor. So whenever I use this annotation in my uh, CDI based service classes, this method will be called. So say example, I have grid service IMP EXT, I have a uh, service class written uh, for, for my CDI based applications. Uh, I have a method called grid CDI. So, and I have annotated the class with, sorry, I have annotated the method with at the rate log. That means, uh, so I have, uh, I have configured a interceptor with this, this particular class. And that means whenever this grid CDI will, uh, will be invoked, before that, uh, your logging interceptor, will, uh, this, this particular interceptor will come into picture and it, uh, it will invoke this log dot method entry. This method will be called. So whatever method you have written and annotated the method with this around invoke, that particular method will be called. This invocation context will give, uh, uh, this subject will have some values like the current method, the callers method. Uh, like in my case, I have strings here, get grid CDI. So if I do that, this invoke case in context or get method will give me uh, the method name of my uh, CDI service class method. So in, in this case, it's uh, grid CDI. Then this invocation um, context or get method get declared in class. It will return me the class name is grid service I will ext. So before the method is processed, in my service class, since I have used an interceptor binding here, and I have I have configured interceptor with my class, so the control flows comes here, and this log method entry uh, gets called. And whatever you want to do, you want to manipulate the parameters, you want to um, have a log on it, you just put a log and use them. So I'll just show you a demo how how do we use it. Uh, say in my I have a servlet servlet three dot compliant servlet. And I have created an injection point um, uh, to call invoke my implementation class grid service IMP EXT. And I also see, uh, I just need to see uh, this method needs to be called. Like uh, this method, before this method is executed, uh, my login interceptor is calling or not, I just I need to verify. So I am calling the method of grid CDI in Ebony. And now come back to the servlet over here. I'll just Refresh it. So you can see uh, the response has come here. External service sublet uh, CDI subletted hello Abani from external services. And if you can see the logs or the server console here, so it says entering uh, my ext colon grid CDI. Now come back to the login interceptor. Here it says same thing we have printed entering um, the method dot uh, sorry. So I have just printed uh, the uh, invoking class colon method name here. So it just prints that same thing here. So entering org mock dot sample at CDI grid service ex dot grid CDI. So uh, this is what is being printed over here. Now even if you can see I have used uh, the Java logger. So you can see this uh, Java logger has printed this. this. This is a logging interceptor and the method is log method entry. The log method entry is getting invoked and it prints something like that. So whatever we have uh, logged here, same thing is coming here. So this is the simplest way I have showcased you uh, that I have how to write a interceptor in CDI based application, how do you declare them in beans.xml, then create, create an interceptor binding and uh, and use those binding in your service implementation class. So, yeah. so this is a pretty simple example of interceptor and interceptor bindings. Thank you.